All right, guys, the software we've been waiting for is here. Finally, a way to practice tuning PID control loops without wrecking the machine or the vehicle or whatever it is that we're working on, or without having to try to tune that temperature control loop in front of a customer while they're over your shoulders and never being able to find the correct PID values. Now there's a software that we can use at home on our computer to practice tuning so that we have the knowledge and confidence when we actually go to site to tune. The PID simulator software is now on the Microsoft Store by ETCO. So PID Explained has partnered with them to create this PID simulator software so that everybody has a chance to practice. So with this software, you're able to adjust your proportional integral derivative and your set point. So if we modify our set point from 1000 to say 1250, we can see how our P, I, and D values affect on the output. You can see your values down here, your set point, output, and actual value. Now say we want to tune this controller to be faster, even though why would you ever, because it's a perfect acting controller, but I want it to be faster. So let's put our P value at 800 and change our set point again. Notice how the proportional is very fast acting on that output, holding it way above and way below the set point, causing oscillations in an unstable controller. That's something we can practice. Okay, so I know 800 is too high. I wanna go higher. It's a software, I can do what I want. And it causes the controller to become even more unstable where the oscillations get bigger. All right. What about 500? Okay, some oscillations, but not terrible. What happens when we increase the integral? Change our set point. Again, oscillation is too high of an integral, so we can set that back down or put it even lower, say to 25. It's just gonna take longer for it to reach the set point. If you guys want videos on what is a PID controller or how to tune one, check out the other videos on our channel. They go in depth and they're fantastic resources. Anybody can be able to tune a PID controller after watching them. Well, okay, maybe not anybody. All right, integral is a little bit low, so it takes just too long to reach the set point. So back up to our starting place of 50. Now I remember our original proportion was 350 and that seemed to be pretty stable. Now with the simulator software, you can change things like the set point ramp rate. So instead of changing instantly from 750 to 1250, we can do that over 30 seconds. Drop back down to 750. Now that set point changes slowly and you can see how the controller reacts. The idea behind all of these advanced options is to try to simulate whatever your real world device is. Now it's not gonna be able to simulate it exactly. No software is unless it's designed for that machine, but this does a pretty good job at helping you to bring it pretty close to what your actual device is gonna be like and try to tune it. Now do note, the multiplication factor or the gain on the P, the I, and the D may be different on your actual controller. Your controller might be 35.5 and 2.5, or 3,500, 500, and 250, or it could be completely different. These 350, 50, 25 on this controller might look like 100, 10, 5 on another controller, because every manufacturer has a little bit of a different calculation or multiplication or gain factor on their PID values. But once you learn how to tune, then you'll be able to figure it out for each manufacturer. The other thing in the simulator, we can offset the actual value. So let's say it's a temperature control loop and somebody opens a valve and the temperature drops or yeah, drops suddenly. We can hit it with a big drop in load and then see how the actual value and the, see how the output affects the actual value to bring it back to that set point. We can increase the load and see how it reacts to that. We can also slow down the reaction time because if I'm talking about a temperature controller, they're generally really slow acting because it takes a while, whether it's through the boiler or through a heat exchanger to heat up those hydronic loops or the air in the room. So we'd move this to a slow reacting controller and now change our set point. And I'm gonna bring this a little bit faster. 
just so the set point changes. As soon as we hit the set point change button, we want that set point to change. With the software, now notice how it takes even longer for that temperature to come back and reach our set point. This is mimicking a temperature controller. So when I'm doing a temperature controller that's slower reacting, I might need a bit of a higher integral or I value. Let's try that again and see how it reacts to that one. Bit of an overshoot. I could probably bring the proportional down a little bit just to limit that overshooting and maybe slightly higher integral to bring it back a little bit faster to the set point, understanding this is a temperature loop, so it's never gonna be immediate reaction. And the last setting here we have is random distortion. So every loop is gonna have a bit of distortion on it, whether that's valves opening and closing, if that's a vehicle on cruise control, it might be little hills in the road or bumps in the road. Uh, it might be other electronic devices interfering with some of the signals, causing a bit of distortion on the lines. And so you can simulate that and see how your controller reacts to a little bit of noise or distortion in the system. Let's make the reaction time a little faster just so for the video's sake so we can see how this thing reacts. Now one thing that's neat about this distortion tab, if you want to simulate an actual say running engine that's trying to, or a generator that's trying to follow the building electrical load or a vehicle that's trying to maintain cruise control while it goes up and down hills, just set the random distortion full. And that'll simulate real load changes. So you can see, okay, does my controller actually react to load changes well? Change our set point, watch our values, and how is it reacting? Okay, as these outputs change, the controller is doing what it's supposed to and it's overshooting, it's dropping the output down. And when it goes under, it is bringing the output up to try and bring it back to maintaining that set point. Now, maybe it could be a little bit faster acting. Uh, we do have a slow acting controller though. If we speed this up, it could probably increase proportional a bit. Just to increase our controller a little bit. Anyway. This is the PID simulator software. Check it out for yourself on the Microsoft store. And there should be a link in the description to be able to click on as well. Download it, practice for yourself. Try and change the settings to what I have here and see if you can find even better PID values than I found and throw them in the comments below. I'd love to see them practice on my own software and see how well you guys do at tuning.